Okay, in this last section of naming nomenclature, we are going to focus on molecular or covalent compounds, same thing, and also on acids. So the first thing you have to be able to do in order to name them is recognize them. So molecules, which are also called binary um, molecular compounds, sometimes covalent compounds, um, you can recognize them because they are made up of metalloids, which are here in red, and or nonmetals, which are shown here in green. Um, acids have an H in front, so they're easy to recognize. You just see an H, something following it, and if you only have one H, that's like called a monoprotic acid. If you see an H2, that's a diprotic acid. If you see an H3, that's a triprotic acid. And again, it doesn't matter which, what follows this H. We'll talk about the things that can follow later, but you just look for the H in front to identify the acid. So naming molecular compounds. Remember that nearly all molecular compounds form from two or more nonmetals or the metalloid section. Um, they are the only compounds that use prefixes. So if you have one of this type of element, you would say mono. If you have two of this type of element, you say di. Three is tri. Four is tetra. Five is penta. Six is hexa. Seven is hepta. 8 is octa, 9 is nona, and 10 is deca. If there is only one atom of the first element, then you do not say mono. For example, we don't say monocarbon monoxide. We say carbon monoxide. Monocarbon monoxide sounds weird. Same with any um, molecular compound. SO2 is not monosulfur dioxide, it's sulfur dioxide. And um, I don't want these compounds to seem totally meaningless to you right now, even though they do become more meaningful in organic chemistry. So sulfur dioxide is actually a common preservative. Um, you find it in soda, but it's in many foods and beverages. Um, another rule is you don't put A's and O's next to each other. So N2O4 is dinitrogen tetroxide, um, not tetraoxide. Get rid of this A. It would, it's too hard to pronounce. They will put two I's next to each other, like they'll say triiodide, but um, they drop an A and an O. So they drop the A when the two appear together. And dinitrogen tetroxide is commonly used as rocket propellant. So try this one. And if you name it properly, the entire name is sulfur hexafluoride. And sometimes students, as they're going along and they're naming these molecular slash covalent compounds, they get worried about charge, and it seems like the charge isn't working. But right now, we don't worry about charge on these. We only think about charge and balancing charge with ionic compounds, not with molecular compounds. Um, here's where you should pause this video, and you should Google someone inhaling sulfur hexafluoride. Um, it's on, you'll find it on YouTube. Um, Kelly Ripa likes to inhale sulfur hexafluoride. There's a couple clips of her. It's really dense, and so when the sulfur hexafluoride passes through the vocal cords, it changes the voice, and it's crazy. Here's some more practice with um, covalent slash molecular compounds. CF4, carbon tetrafluoride. This is a common refrigerant. CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. Um, it is used um, in healthcare, it's used less, but it used to be used um, to knock patients out. And K2O, if you called that dipotassium oxide, it was a trick, it's ionic. Potassium is a metal, and we never use di, tri, tetra, penta, etc. with metals. We just say what it is, potassium oxide. The charge will always tell us how much, because with ionic compounds we know that the charges have to equal zero. So acids will be next.